Good morning, folks. So uh, today we want to continue with the lesson of uh, 3.8. Okay, so this one is the lesson of uh, lecture 3.8 for calculus. So let's take a look at that. So it's all about the things that you guys, something that we talk about in pre-cal ready. So it's about the exponential growth and the decay functions uh, with the derivative. So 3.8. So record that the function of y of t equals y of 0 equals e, uh, times e to the power of kt. So y of 0, this one is considered the initial amount. Okay, So I just want to put the notes here. So this one is called the initial amount. Okay, let's see. So we try to get used with this tablet. So again, so y of 0 right here. So this one is called the uh, initial amount. So I'll change that to a different color for this one. So make it simpler. And then k is just a constant. OK, so k is a constant. So please bear with me right here. So this one, try to get it used to it. It's a little bit difficult. Constant. So we can say that's a constant rate. You want to do that. And then T. So that just gives you the initial time. You know, the time for the, you know, after like a certain population of growth. Okay, so now here's one of the problem. A bacteria culture initially contains 200 cells and grows at a rate proportional to its size. And after an hour, the population has increased to 100. So this one is just like a given condition. Okay, so let's just do some annotation. We do know that's a word problem. So we can always uh, do some annotation with the, you know, all the indicated information. So 200 cells. So 200 cells right here, so this one is considered the initial amount. So you can say that's y of 0. And then proportional, so that means we're using this model. So to its size, okay, to the size, that means y of t. And after an hour, so after an hour, so this one would be considered 1 hour. And then the population has increased to uh, 800, okay? So 800. So now, the things that K is not given from the problem here, so what we need to do, we need to find out what K first. So the way to solve for K, so we just plug in all the numbers. So you started with that 800. Okay. Again, try to get used with that, the uh, tablet here. It's hard to use. So start with that 800. So that equals y of 0, so it's 200 times e to the power of kt. Again, k, we don't know what that is, but up to 1 hour, so it's 1 times k, which is 1k. And then from here, you want to solve for k. So again, this one's 800. So 800 divided by 200, so we do have 4. So that equals e to the power of 1k, which is k. And as you may notice that, in order to bring down the power, we take the natural log both sides. So natural log of e, that's just 1. So that means k, it's considered natural log of 4. Okay, so keep that in mind. We do have 200 cells. So that's the initial population. And then we find a value of k already. So just rewrite the model. So the model would be considered y of t. So that equals... 200 times e to the power of natural log of 4 times t. Okay? So I just want to go back to uh, one thing real quick. Make sure that this one, it's not stopping right here. Okay, so it's not, so it keeps running. That's good. Okay, so now the next part that we need to do, so we need to find out so all the different questions here and see what we can do with all the questions. Okay, so the next slide, let's go to the next slide. 
So find an expression of the number of bacteria up to t hours. So that's what we did there. So this one, let me just rewrite it. So this one, y of t. So that equals 200 times e to the power of k, which is natural log of 4, and then times the time, t. So now you want to find a number of bacteria after 3 hours. So basically this one just plugging a number, so y of 3. So it's 200 times e to the power of natural log of 4 times 3. And for those who might be wondering, do we need to use a calculator for this? Well, certainly you can use a calculator for this, or you can actually do it by hand as well. Okay, so try to do it by hand. So this one would be considered 200, well, e to the power of natural log, that's just one. So, it's, And then this one is just like a power of another power. So this one you can rewrite it as 200 times e to the power of natural log of 4. And then the whole quantity to the power of 3. Okay, so it's a power of power. But now let me just test that on the calculator first and see what happens. So it's 200 times second e to the power of natural log of 4 times 3. So natural log of 4 and then times 3. So what I find out here, it's uh, uh, 12,800. Okay, so we're just right. So we just cancel out that e to the power of natural log, so we can just raise up the power, because that multiplying power, so it's a power power. So basically that e to the power of natural log, you can just cancel it out, because that's just 1. Okay, so again, right here, so just cancel that out. So we do have 200 times 4 to the 3rd power. So 4 to the 3rd power, which is considered 64. So 64 times 200, so that would give you 12,800. Okay, so that's for part B. And then for part C, find the rate of growth after 3 hours. So that means, so basically this one you want to take the derivative from here. So again, so this function can be verified into 200 times 4 to the power of t, because that basically e to the power of natural log just got canceled. Okay, so e to the power of natural log just got canceled, so that's another simplest way to rewrite the equation. So basically we want to take the derivative from that, the original model. So that means y prime of t. So you may notice that we use the quotient rule. And also we use the exponential formula for the derivative. So the derivative for that one, which is the same thing, it's 4 to the power of t. But don't forget, multiply by natural log of 4. Okay? So anytime they deal with that exponential form like this, so it's 4 to the power of t, natural log of 4. Well, because that, the formula for the derivative of a to the power of x, it's considered a to the power of x times natural log of a. Okay, so just keep that as a reminder. So basically this model right here, so that just shows you the rate of change. So after three hours, so you just plug in a time. Okay, so again, so this one plug in a time, so I'm kind of running off space here. So let me just put it right down the bottom under part D. So y prime of three. So we do have 200 times four to the power of three times natural log of four. So again, so this one I'm going to do down the my TI calculator. So 200 times 4 to the power 3 and then times natural log of 4. So let's see what I find out here. So it's 1,000, no actually 17,744. So that means the rate that's just grow pretty fast. Okay, so it's going... So, pretty fast. So this one, it's about, oops, excuse me. So let me just delete that. Okay, so for that part right there, so the rate, so after you find it out, it's 17,744 point 
five, seven. And this one is about the, uh, the number of bacteria. So the unit for that would be considered, you can say that's the number of items per hour. Okay. And then the last one, when would the population reach 10,000? So this one, just going back to the original model. So you just want to set that. So for part D, so set that one zero 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 ten thousand so that equals 200 times 4 to the power of t and then basically this one is just solve for t so 10,000 divided by 200 so we do have 50 okay so 50 so that equals 4 to the power of t okay and then solve for t right here. So basically take the natural log both sides. So natural log of 50. And then take the natural log on the other side. So you bring down the power. So t times natural log of 4. And then basically here divided by natural log of 4. Okay, so let's find out what t is. So natural log of 50 divided by natural log of 4. So natural log of 50 divided by natural log of 4. So this one, it will take about two hours, uh, two point eight hours. So that's almost two hours and fifteen minutes. Okay, so two point eight hours. Okay, so this one is just the first word problem. It's just like a regular exponential growth model. So now let's see. Look at the other one. So another one is about the half life. Again, we talked about this one in pre-cal already. So half life of the uh, of the exponential decay functions. So half of y zero. So that means half of the original amount. Okay. So let's put the notes right here. So this part right here is half of the original amount. Okay. Okay, so that's half of the original amount. Again, try to get used with the tablet. It's very difficult. And then here's what we know. So the initial amount, again, y of 0. So this one is the initial. And then k is the constant, so t is the time. Okay, so just like the previous example. So the half life of bismuth, the bismuth, excuse me, so 210, it's five days. Its sample originally has a mass of 500 milligram, and then find the formula for the mass remaining after t days. So it's, it's a half life, so we do know that it takes five days to get down to the half life. So again, and also for part A, we do have the original amounts, which is 800 milligram. Well, it doesn't really matter about the Y0, so the Y0 can just cross that out here. If try to simplify it to find out K. So let's just solve for K. So we got one half. So that equals E to the power of KT. So again, it takes five days to get to the half life. So it's five times K. And then from here, we solve for K. So take the natural log both sides. We do have natural log of one half. Natural log of e that's just one. So that means five k equals natural log of one half. And then k equals natural log of one half over five. And you may notice that this one we can simplify it a little bit more. Natural log of one is just like zero. So this one is the quotient to difference. So this one is written as negative natural log of two over 5. So we try to solve for k. So now let's find out what we need to do for that uh, part A, part B, and part C. So a sample originally has a mass of 800 milligram. Okay, so that's the original amount. Original amount. And then find a formula for the mass remaining up to t days. 
Okay, so now I need more space. So let me set up the new slide for this one right here. Okay, so file. So again, the original amount is 800. Okay, so y of t. So that equals 800 times. And then uh, for the model, Okay, going back to this one. So the model that we have, it's 800 times e to the power of kt. So e to the power of negative natural log of 2 over 5. Okay, so e to the power of natural log. Uh, negative natural log of 2 over 5, because that's the value of k. And then times the time. Again, this part right here, that's just the power. And now, back to the question that we have. So we need to find out the formula. Well, so basically, that's it. That's the formula for this, right? So the one that we found. So y of t equals 800 times e to the power of negative natural log of 2 divided by 5 times t. Okay, so now here's the questions for the next one. So find a mass remaining after 30 days. So after 30 days... So that means we need to plug in a number. Okay, so this one's for A. So for the 30 days, so that means Y of 30. So it's 800 times E to the power of negative natural log of 2 over 5 times 30. Well, we do know that the population, I mean the amount is going to be much less you know, up to 30 dates, because this one is the exponential decay model. Okay, so now let's find out. So 800 times second e to the power of negative. Got to be careful with the negative sign that I use. It's under the 3 right there, under ti. So negative natural log of 2 divided by 5 and then times 30. Yeah, the population, well, the amount is going to be a whole lot smaller. So eventually it's going to be 12.5. 12.5. So let me try that one more time. So just want to make sure of that. So 800 times second base e to the power of negative na natural log. Natural log of 2. And then that quantity times 6. Because that 5 and 30, we can cross cancel. You want to do that so that one can cross cancel. So ne uh, it's negative natural log of 2 times 6. Yeah, so that's 12.5. So after 30 days, so it's only 12.5 bacteria remain. And then now let's go back to the question here. So now what about for C? So when is the mass reduced to 1 milligram? So if the final amount reduced down to 1 milligram, so that means the final amount, it's going to be 1. And then that equals 800 times e to the power. Again, the original model, negative natural log of 2 over 5, and then multiply by the time. So now let's find out what t is. So one thing that we can do, so we can just take the, well, just start with the division, so it's 1 over 800. And then, so that equals e to the power of negative natural log of 2 over 5 times t. So now you might be wondering, how do we get the e right here? How do we bring down the power? So we can take the natural log on both sides. So natural log of 1 over 800. Natural log of e, that just got canceled. So we just left with negative natural log of 2 over 5 and then times t. So now, try to isolate the variable. So that means t eventually is going to be natural log of 1 over 800 divided by negative natural log of 2 over 5. So now let's find out what that is on the calculator. So this one you probably want to round it up to a whole number because t is the, the number of dates. So now let's do that on the calculator. So we do have natural log of the quantity. 1 over 
800. And then divided by the quantity of negative natural log of 2 over 5. So you need to put in some parentheses to open close parentheses for the quantity because this one it's under the denominator. So eventually, so here's what I got. It's about 48 dates. So 48.2 dates. So it's almost 49 dates. Okay. So this one it's just rounded up to a whole number. So it's about 48 dates. Okay. So here's one of the exponential decay problem for the half life. Okay, so now let's see what else that we got for the rest of the, the lecture here. Okay, so the next one. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so here's the next one. So the next one is called the Newton's Law of Cooling. The Newton's Law of Cooling. So it's something that we talked about in pre-cal already. For those of you who have me for pre-cal, I know some teachers would probably skip this part of the for pre-cal unless you're taking honors for pre-cal. So the rate of change of the temperature of an object, it's directly proportional to the difference of objects, temperature, and the surrounding temperature. So basically this one just shows that dt over dt, so d capital T over d little t. So it's the rate of change of the temperature of the object. Okay, so let's just put a note right here. So it's called the rate of change. of the temperature of the object, okay? Okay, so now K is a constant. K is a constant. It's a proportional constant. And then capital T, so capital T then that would be considered the final temperature of the object. And then T of uh, Ts or T sub s is called a surrounding temperature. Okay, so there's so many footnotes here. So one thing I just need to point out, so T0, so this one, it's not T0, this one's supposed to be, uh, let me fix that. So Ts is supposed to be the surrounding temperature. Again, it's hard to move the tablet. So for this one here, this one's supposed to be considered TS. So that's a surrounding temperature. So, so far you haven't learned about integration yet. So once you learn about integration, I can show you the relationship, how to go from here to here. So this one is called the uh, Newton's Law of Cooling. The first one, it just shows the rate of change of the temperature of the object, okay? So T of cap, uh, capital T of little t, so that equals absolute value of the initial temperature minus the surrounding temperature times e to the power of kt, and then plus the surrounding temperature, okay? Again, T0, it's called the initial temperature. So let's say that you put in something to the microwave. Okay, so what's the initial temperature of the object? And then surrounding temperature, it's just like a room temperature. And then K is a constant, T is like the time after you put in, you know, to the microwave after like a certain period of time. And then capital T of little t right here, then that'll be the final temperature. Okay, so now let's do one problem like this. Okay, so now here's the one. So when a cold drink is taken from a refrigerator, its temperature is 5 degrees Celsius and after 25 minutes in a room of 20 degrees Celsius and its temperature has increased to 10 degrees Celsius. Well, because that it's warming, you know, warming up, you know, because the room temperature is kind of, I mean, it's kind of warm. So that's why the temperature has risen up. Okay, so now what's the temperature of the drink after 15 minutes? So we're going to use that, the model. Again, the model is capital T of little t. So that equals, we don't need to take the absolute value, just put in like initial temperature minus the surrounding temperature times e to the power of kt. 
and then this one here plus the surrounding temperature. Okay, so we're going to use that model. So this one is showing that, so what's the temperature of the drain after 15 minutes? So that means we just need to plug in a time. Okay, up to 15 minutes. Okay, so K, and it looks like we need to solve for K first. Well, let's see, for K right here, it's not given. So you want to find out what K first. Okay, so again, to find out K, so we are using this one. So the rate of change of the temperature, so that equals K times T0 minus TS. Okay, so let's go back to the previous slide right there. Okay, let's go back to the previous one. Oops. Okay, so in order to find out that, so it's K times the initial temperature minus the surrounding temperature. So we're going to use that to find out the value of K first. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to this one. So before we find out the final temperature of the drink after 15 minutes, so we need to know the, the value of K. Okay, so now the way to find the value of K, so we can start with that, the rate of change of the temperature, so DT over DT. So its temperature is 5 degrees Celsius after 25 minutes in the room 20 degrees Celsius, and the temperature has increased to 10 degrees. So we can use the information to find out the rate of change. Okay, so the way to do it, so D capital T over DT. So we just use the average rate of change formula, so just like the slope formula. Okay, so start with that 20. Okay, so the final temperature minus 5. And then the time it takes us 25 minutes. So the time it takes us 25 minutes. So divided by the difference of the time, 25 minutes. Again, D capital T, that means the change of the temperature. D little t, that means the change of the time. So 20 minus 5, which is what? 15. So we got 15 over 25. And then you try to reduce it. So this one divided by 5, top and the bottom. So we do have 1 over 3. So that means the value of K, well, it's not the value of K yet, so one-third equals K times the difference of the initial temperature and the surrounding temperature. So the initial temperature is 5 degrees Celsius minus the surrounding temperature, which is 20 degrees. So 5 minus 20, which is negative 15. And now from here, so we want to solve for K. So the way to solve for K, so we divide it by negative 15. So one third times Okay, so this one divided by negative 15. So in other words, that means you multiply by the reciprocal. So that means K equals negative 1 over 45. Okay, so now let's find out the temperature after 15 minutes by plugging everything back to the original equation. So the original equation, we do have T of T, capital T of little t. Surrounding temperature, so we do have 5 degree minus the room temperature, which is 20. So E to the power of KT. So for K, it's negative 1 over 45 times the time and then plus the surrounding temperature. So the surrounding temperature, what we got here is 20 degree. And then we try to solve for T from here. Okay. 
So we'll try to solve for the temperature. So the time that we have, again, the time, it's after the first 15 minutes. Okay, so let's change that to time. So t this one is saying that it's 5 minus 20, so it's negative 15. So e to the power of negative 1 over 45 times 50, and then plus 20. Okay, so the rest of this, all you need to do, just put it into the calculator and find out exactly what the temperature is after the first 15 minutes. So let's see what I got here. So negative 15 times second base E to the power of negative 50 over 45. So that one, you try to reduce it, divided by 5 top and the bottom, you'll get uh, negative 10 over 9 negative 10 over 9 and then plus 20 okay so eventually the drink it's going to be considered 15.06 degree of Celsius so 15.06 degree Celsius. Again, so this one is just like one of the classic Newton's law of cooling problem. Okay, so the next one you want to find out about the temperature would be 15 degrees Celsius. So that means, well, this one you can just try on your own. So just set that 15 as the final temperature, which is close to this one here. So the time it takes, probably it's going to be similar to this one, but it should be a little bit um, less than because this one is 15.06. If that's 15 degrees Celsius, so this the time it takes should be a little bit less than that. Okay, so try to do that with your calculator for the last question here. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have for the rest of this. And the rest of the lecture, again, this one, nothing special, nothing new. That's something you learn from Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal Ready. So we do have two different kind of compound interests. So one is called a compound interest continuously, which is the bottom one here. And the other one is called the compound interest um, periodically. Okay, compound interest periodically. So A of 0, it's called the initial amounts. 1, that means it guarantees it's always 100%. And then R, it's always the interest rate. N is the compound period time. And then T is the number of year. So sometimes it's written a little bit differently. It's like P of T equals P of zero, initial principle, which is the initial amount. And then the rest of this, it's pretty much the same thing. So you just want to compare and contrast and see which uh, compound interest rate that you want to apply for. And some of those, you'll get more money back. And some of those, you get less money back. Okay, so now we'll see the next one. So let's say that we do have a problem like this one right here. If $1,000 is borrowed at 8% interest and then find amount due at the end of three years if the interest is compounded. So one is annually. If that's annually, so that means N is considered one. Quarterly, so that means N is four. Monthly. Okay, this one's misspelling, so monthly. So this one, it's uh, 30. And then weekly, so weekly, that means N equals 52. And then daily, so N is 365. And then hourly, so that means N equals 365 times 24. So you want to find out which one that is guaranteed to give you the, you know, the most money back. So I would say that hourly. And then you want to compare that to compound continuously. So continuously, that means you, you want to use the, the PERP model. Okay. So the one that we have is uh, A of T for the continuously, which is uh, P E to the power of RT. So basically, 8% is the interest rate. Convert that to percentage. So it's 0 0.08. And then three years. So that's just T. So basically just plug in a number and then you'll see that the one guaranteed the most money 
would be either F or G. Okay, continuously, that means nonstop. Hourly, so that's going to be a lot of compound number here. So this one, the last two solutions, they're going to be pretty close. So if I know exactly what that is by plugging a number, back to the formula. So let me know any questions that you have today. I know it's kind of a tough time, especially using this tablet. It's very difficult because I'm using the different computer for doing the, you know, the lecture today. So hopefully I try to get used to it because I want to get more like a better resolution compared to the old one that I have. That one's a little bit low resolution. So, you know, put in any comments, you know, questions that you have under the, you know, the video. And thank you for watching that, the lecture today. And I'll see you next time and make sure that you need to do the homework i know so try to do the best you can so the best way you can check the word is by using the slater so subscribe that i think it's for free slater and then type in the edition of the textbook by james stewart so okay